The DJI Mini 4 Pro is one of the best drones out on the market today. It is affordable, it is compact, and the footage that you can get out of this little guy rivals drones two or three times the price. And this is quite literally a drone that you can purchase, put in the sky, and get some really good footage from. But if you want the very best from your Mini 4 Pro, there are some settings that we're gonna wanna change first. Uh, first, we're gonna jump into the menu system, and then we're gonna change some of the camera settings. To get into the menus, in the upper right-hand corner, there are three different dots. Hit those, and this gets you into the main menu system. And we're just gonna run through this fairly quickly. Uh, first, we have the safety um, obstacle avoidance. I have set to bypass. This just means when a uh, an object is in the path of the drone, it'll either go around or above that object. Break means the, the drone is going to stop when it senses an object in its way, and off means it's going to hit that object if it's in its way. And then in the bypass mode, there's two different uh, kind of sub modes of bypass. There's normal and nifty. Normal mode is just going to give a little more padding around that object. So if you're coming up to a tree, it's going to just give a little more distance between the drone and the tree. In nifty mode, the drone is going to try to get past the tree as close as it can and try to stay on course uh, as much as it can. But it will warn you when you go into nifty mode that there is an, uh, a there is a chance that it might hit that object. So that is, is kind of up to you how kind of much risk you want to take there. I just have it set to normal mode. It, it bypasses objects just fine. Uh, display radar map I have turned on. This is just going to display uh, what the sensors are seeing on your screen. So if there's something above, below, or behind, or beside the drone, you'll just get a visual representation of that. Return to home, I have set to optimal with the height at 360 feet. And this just means if I lose connection with the drone and it's trying to return to home, it's going to go up to 360 feet. So if there's any trees or buildings in the way, um, I don't risk the drone hitting those. Uh, update home point, AR settings is the same from factory. I have the max altitude set to a thousand feet. And I do that because even though the, the limit is 400 feet, at least here in America. Uh, in Pennsylvania, there are some mountains. And so even if you take off in a valley and you're only two or 300 feet off the ground, as you're kind of going up that slope, uh, the drone thinks that it's climbing and climbing and climbing. So you might be 100 feet off the ground, but the drone thinks that it's 800 feet off the ground. And so legally we're, we're good because we're only 100 feet, but uh, by setting it a thousand feet, I can get up and down mountains without having to really kind of run into that height limit. Distance limit, no limit, um, pretty self-explanatory. Compass, IMU, if you need to calibrate those, that you can do, you can do that here. Auxiliary LED auto, um, advanced safety features. If I lose signal, I just have it returning to home. I, I have it set like this instead of hover or descend, just in case the drone's out over water. I don't want it uh, descending or just sitting out and hovering until it runs out of battery if I can't reconnect to it. So return to home is probably the safest, safest bet there. And then moving on, we have control here. I have it set to Imperial because I'm here in the States. Uh, smart shot settings. There's not much to change there. And then gain and expo tuning. This is where you can adjust the horizontal speed, ascend and descend speed for each mode. So if you have the smart controller, you have three different modes, cine, normal and sport. Uh, normal and sport, I left the same from factory, but cine mode, I have changed the horizontal ascend and descend speed quite a bit. So the max horizontal speed is five miles an hour. And this just means when I'm in cine mode, I can do really kind of small and precise moves. And this is nice if I'm flying close to something or if I'm flying through something, I just wanna have that more granular control. And that's how you would set that up. Uh, gimbal mode is set to follow. Gimbal calibration, if the gimbal's kind of off tilted, that's where you can calibrate it. Stick mode is mode one. I think some DJI drones started shipping in mode two. I've always learned on mode one and prefer that. Uh, button customization. The only thing I changed here was the right dial 
is from the factory set to zoom in and zoom out. But the Mini 4 Pro doesn't actually have a zoom lens. What it's doing is just digitally cropping in and, and cropping out on the image, which I can do that in post if I want. So I have it set to adjust shutter speed. So if I'm in the, if I'm in the air and I need to darken or brighten the image, uh, I can just use the right dial to do so. Everything else is the same as factory. Uh, RC calibration, tutorial. All right, here we go. Camera uh, format, MP4, D log M is the color profile that I use. And I don't have color display assist turned on, but this is how you could uh, view your image with a LUT pre-applied. Uh, if you have color assist on, the drone is still going to record log. It will just show you a pre-graded image. I have that turned off. I don't mind looking at a log image. Uh, Kodak, H.265, video subtitles on, Flickr auto, histogram on. I'm constantly referencing the histogram to make sure my shadows and highlights aren't clipping. So that is very important to have on. Peaking's off, overexposure's off. I use this standard kind of grid format. Uh, sometimes I will use this um, X format as well if I'm rotating around an object and I want to keep that object dead center. This is a great little kind of uh, grid format overlay to, to make sure that, that you're keeping an object dead center in the frame. Uh, frame guides, I, I typically leave off, but if you are shooting for a specific format, um, frame guides are there and helpful. White balance, I have set to manual 5600K and that is daylight. So most of the time, if I'm shooting, it's going to be outside. So 5600K, and then if I do need to make any adjustments, like if it's cloudy out or, or you know, uh, sunrise or sunset, I'll just adjust that in post. Here's where you can format your SD card, and then you have custom folder names and file names. And this is handy if you are working for a client and you can put in the client's name into the file name so that then whenever you have all your files brought in, you can just search for the client's name. There's all your drone files ready to go. So that is uh, a handy little thing. Uh, for transmission, 2.4 gigahertz is better if you're flying uh, long distances and then 5.8 gigahertz is better if you're flying close uh, to the controller itself. Uh, I have it set to dual band and just have the controller automatically determine which band is, is best. And then about, this is where you change name, Wi-Fi model, all of that. And so that is how I have my settings set up in the menus. And next, what we're gonna do is go through each individual camera profile and set those up. The way that DJI Mini 4 Pro handles camera settings is there is no global kind of settings that you can change. So if you adjust your, your photo mode to shoot in RAW, and you then switch to time-lapse mode or switch to panorama mode, that's not going to carry over those same settings. So we're gonna to have to go through and set those up independently. Now for camera settings, we're gonna start off in photo mode. And the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is go down to the bottom and if it's set to auto, just tap the auto camera and that's going to put it into pro mode. And then you can adjust the ISO shutter speed and everything independently. By default, these typically are set to auto. And so if you just click auto, and click auto here, um, that is going to allow you to manually set the ISO and shutter speed. Uh, I typically shoot for 100 to 200 on ISO because it is still a fairly small sensor. It can get noisy quick. So the lower you can keep that ISO, the better. And then I just adjust the shutter speed accordingly. And then left of the camera settings, we have white balance, which we already preset to 5600. Format, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that's raw. Uh, aspect ratio, I shoot four by three. And even if I need a 16 by nine, shooting four by three, you're getting the full width of the sensor. And then resolution, you have 12 megapixel and 48 megapixel. I shoot 48 megapixel, but there is something to note here. Um, if you do shoot at 12 megapixel and you take a photo, 
There's a little bit of a lag, but it's not too bad. And now if we switch here to 48 megapixel, you notice a much, much longer lag. So because of the, the bump in resolution and the Mini 4 Pro having uh, limited kind of processing power due to the weight, um, shooting in 48 megapixel is going to slow down the process. So if you're trying to take a bunch of shots, uh, maybe 12 megapixel is all you need. I personally like 48 megapixel here. This is also where you can set your storage and in photo mode, this, these settings do kind of transfer across. So whenever you have auto exposure bracketing, when you have time shot in burst mode, this is going to carry across all of those settings. Um, in burst mode, uh, if you do have it set to 48 megapixel, it is going to be a lot slower than if you have 12 megapixel. So just something to note. Going into video mode here, again, if this is set to auto, just tap the camera in the bottom right hand corner here that puts you in pro mode and then make sure your ISO is 100 and then your shutter speed depending on your frame rate I'm shooting 24 frames so I want a shutter speed double whatever the frame rate is so that's 1 over 50 and I will adjust the shutter up and down a bit depending on uh, exposure but 180 degrees is, is kind of the, the golden rule there. Um, toggling across one more, we have 4K, 24, storage is set up. We already set up the D-Log M. This is where you can toggle on your display color assist, H.265 and MP4, that's already set up from the menus. And in video mode, it does not transfer over the settings. So whenever you go into night mode, we're working with a completely different set of, of parameters down here. So we can set the ISO and the shutter speed to be completely different from the original video mode. And so I have it set to ISO 400. And in this mode, the Mini 4 Pro is going to be doing uh, baked in noise reduction and because of that, there is no log mode. And so if you click over here and look, you can shoot 4K 24, 25, and 30, and your color is set to normal and your Kodak is H.265. But other than that, because of the noise reduction that's being done in camera, you can't really change many more settings than that. And then last but not least, we have slow motion, which again has its own kind of subset of settings here. And so because I am shooting 4K 100, I want a shutter speed of one over 200. And because that's uh, taking less light into the sensor, uh, ISO of 400, I could probably get away with an ISO of 200 here, but uh, Again, just always trying to keep that 180 degree shutter rule. And in high speed mode, you can shoot either 4K 100 or 1080 at 100 or 200. I like the 4K 100 personally. And you can shoot again in D-Log M, which is definitely the, the mode I prefer. And then toggling through, because the drone is not in the air, master shots and quick shots, um, is not going to be enabled, but you can't actually change any settings in master shots and quick shots. So if, if you're kind of new to flying drones, I could see master shots and quick shots being a, a cool, you know, just kind of intro to what a drone can do. But for me personally, not being able to change any of the settings, so it's always going to be shooting automatic everything and in the standard color profile. I don't really use either of those modes. And toggling down to time lapse or hyperlapse mode, even though we set up uh, photo mode, the hyperlapse mode is going to use its own set of settings. So just make sure, like in photo mode, that we're, we're setting up pro mode, 100 ISO, adjusting the shutter speed accordingly, and make sure that we're shooting in raw. So because a hyperlapse, it's going to spit out a video as well as the photos. If you have the original set to off, it is just going to give you a video file in MP4 format. 
If you have JPEG, it's going to give you a 4K video plus JPEG. And if you have it set to raw, you get 4K video plus all of the raw files if you wanna go and rebuild that hyperlapse yourself. So I always have raw enabled here so that I can take those files, re-edit them and re-export them into my own hyperlapse. And again, you can just toggle between internal storage and your SD card here. And then the last setting here is panorama mode. Uh, I can't set it up here because the drone's not in the air, but you kind of get the, the, the idea here. Make sure you're shooting uh, raw photos and make sure that you're in the pro mode so you can set your ISO and shutter speed accordingly. And that's pretty much going to do it. That is top to bottom how I have my Mini 4 Pro set up to get the very best quality I can. If you have any questions, leave those in a comment down below. Hopefully you guys found this video interesting or at least helpful. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in another one.